All right, great. So uh, yeah, welcome everyone for the whiteboard.chat advanced features webinar. We really appreciate you all uh, taking time out of your busy weeks uh, to attend our webinar and uh, learn from it. We, we often see uh, uh, our teachers joining webinars uh, on a repeat basis as well. So we hope we can cover new features. If you have questions, please do type them in the Zoom chat window. That way, um, I have my colleague pa Pawan who would uh, who will read out the questions to me periodically, and we can answer the question for everybody's benefit. Uh, what we plan to do today is uh, we will go over the demo of advanced features. So I will likely touch upon a few basic things if questions come up, but mostly advanced features. If you uh, aren't very familiar with whiteboard.chat, certainly you can still gather a lot from this webinar, but in addition, please do go and see some of the webinar recordings of the basic webinar, or you can also attend uh, and register for a basic webinar, which will be next Wednesday. Uh, and uh, so as we go through the, the advanced features, I will answer questions as well. I will try and prepare like a puzzle board where I can invite uh, all of you and have a uh, live experience of whiteboard as well. And um, we talk, typically stop um, uh, at the top of the hour. So by say 5 p.m. Pacific, we might start, we might end our normal webinar session. We wait for uh, 30 minutes after the webinar to answer any specific questions that uh, teachers may have. Uh, it's also a good time for teachers to get off mute, you know, speak about any recommendations they have for us, and and that really helps us out in a big way. Okay, so. Uh, the marquee feature for whiteboard.chat uh, is the observability that it provides to the teacher, right? So within a classroom, teachers used to have the ability to walk around, see what the students are doing, see how they're making progress and uh, help them out. So this is one of the key things that whiteboard.chat has done really well and uh, has been uh, greatly appreciated by our teachers. Uh, and the the adop adoption of whiteboard.chat because of this main feature has been huge. But in addition to that, once we got started, we have we've received a lot of feedback from our teacher community, which we, has helped us improve whiteboard.chat and provide features which are specifically required for teaching. So uh, that has, uh, has helped us in a big way to grow really fast. And now we have teachers from pretty, pretty much all over the world who are not only using this, but also attending our webinars. So we really, really uh, appreciate that. Uh, how are teachers using whiteboard? Uh, they are not only taking some of the existing material that they have, uploading it and teaching their, their classes, but they're also preparing a lot of these new interesting ways to teach. They're creating game boards, bump boards. This is a, a great example of uh, a teacher using syllables for shoots and ladders. So she can create- uh, Hey, uh, Sid, yes. oh, sorry, one second. Sure. Can we check? Uh, people are saying that they're waiting in the waiting room. Uh, is there a way to- I'm just going to pause the recording for a second. All right. So yeah, so the teachers have been using a variety of techniques to engage students and whiteboard, uh, the dot chart has been providing the tools for this. And uh, so here's another board that a teacher prepared during uh, winter last time uh, is the ability to add. So she added a couple of spinners where students were expected to add numbers and then move their individual tokens around. So it is a great uh, in, uh, group board activity that she could make as well. So um, as you may already know that we are extremely en engaged with our, our teacher community, uh, not only over our social media platforms, all Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but we are very receptive also to feedback that you send over feedback at whiteboard.chat. Uh, we have very frequently even meet teachers on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help them out. Just this afternoon, I helped a teacher who had prepared a board with her student, but uh, she, it, she had some issues with the sharing. So I did a quick Google meet with her and we fixed her problem. So do reach out to us. We, we really want to help our teacher community as much as we, uh, as we can. Uh, just a quick uh, word of note, uh, if you'd like to have any um, professional development certificates for this webinar, send us a mail to again, feedback at whiteboard.chat and we will definitely send you your PD certificate as well. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, I'm going to switch over to my browser. So this is uh, our whiteboard.chat um, splash page, right? The home page. Uh, you guys already probably already familiar with the privacy and terms and about us is all down here on the bottom left. 
and um, we recently added a bycast cloud credits um, a donate button as well if you guys are interested in uh, donating anything to, for our uh, cloud expenses the uh, uh, like i said if you'd like to register for additional webinars do click on this banner it will take you to a registration form and you can do it there so let's jump into our start teaching mode. Uh, as you're already familiar with, most likely start collaborating is a board for collaboration um, with no teacher student differentiation per se. Start teaching is what is the focus of, of, of our webinar. So let's get into start teaching. So this provides us with our teacher board. Uh, here I'm logged in as my teacher user, which is Sid. And um, so let's get going. I'm going to start first uh, with uh, our autocorrect feature because it's been, uh, I've, we've been seeing a lot of questions about that and I think there's a lot of value in going over that. So let's, let's say I prepare a simple assignment. So I'm going to increase my font size a little bit here. And I say I, I create um, a simple exercise. All right, so I create this. And I would like my students to um, add some answers in there. So I'm going to add a text box. The text box is available here in the tools menu. Let me show you where it is again. So it's tools and scroll down here to find the text box. I'm gonna add a text box that students can use to fill their answer here. Another text box out here. Okay. Now, in order to uh, initialize this or to set the right answers for this, you can click the select my button, right click on this uh, text box and then select add answers and points. So you can say that, let's say I would want to give them 10 points for this answer and the answer is eight. Now, if you have, um, let's say a text-based answer which can have multiple different options, you can separate these options with a semicolon like this says out here. Uh, of course, with math, you have a specific answer. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to do the same for this box as well. Add answers and points. Do another 10 points. Give it minus three as the answer and we'll save it. So now I'm set with my assignment. I'm going to invite a student as you are already familiar with this invite. So you go to the button, invite button up here, click this, you get a invite panel. A few things uh, that have changed here and been improved here is that uh, you can share your invite link to a Google Classroom by clicking on this button, or you can now also share it to your Teams. So if you have a classroom or channel within Teams, you can click this button. It opens up a dialog uh, like this, which uh, helps you select a channel or, um, uh, or you know create an assignment within a classroom. Of course, this assumes you are using Teams and you have a, a teams for education account, right? So otherwise, so you would normally just take this URL and share it with your students. So I'm gonna close this. Here I have uh, another browser window, which is an incognito window. I'm going to use that for my student. All right, so here's my student join him here. Now let's say the student starts to solve this problem. So I, I'm gonna say okay, eight. Okay, and let's say the student makes a mistake here, right? Now, as a teacher, I'm going back to the teacher board. You have the ability to correct these boards. So again, the three dot icon. Let me just click on mute area. Uh, so yeah, let me go back here. So three dot icon, and then you can say correct all boards. So now if I go to the student board, as you can see that the student has got a score of 50%. The, we, we did the correction just once. So we checked our answers just one time and the student essentially just got 10 points out of 20, right? So this is one way to auto correct. Now, you can get these the results of the auto auto correction so when you have a bunch of students you can also download the results so this would uh, be in your download section if you click on download report it gives you a comma separated value so if i can open this up in my excel
Let me set the boiler to open up. All right, here we go. So as you see, the student one here was able to score fifty percent. And so as you get a bunch of students in your classroom, you would get all of the, the uh, all of these. It's almost like a roster with their um, with their performance and uh, their assessment rating there. All right. So uh, so real quick, I'm going to pause to take some questions. If there are any questions. So one one question said from Noor is, uh, what happens if they enter a minus Space three is that will it correct? A space three instead of minus three. Uh, yes. So if three no, was your space in the between the minus and the three. Uh, yeah, I think that that would count as a different uh, is an incorrect answer. So because um, uh, it's more of a so if you have spaces at the, at the trailing or the end, those would get removed. But the ones which are in the middle would be treated as the right answer. So. Um, is there any way to uh, so maybe we can look into Im improving that if there's specific numbers as a result? So, any other question? No, that's it. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's see now. Uh, now, if you want to provide the ability for students to also uh, do the correction by themselves, here's one way to do it. You, the teacher would click on uh, the tools button again, and then select add link. I'm going to, and the teacher needs to place that button. And now you have, you, the earlier you might remember that the add link option had the ability to add a website link or a, add a link to a page in the book. Now we have a third option, which is to auto correct. And let's say check answers this is what I want to call this. So here's, I've got a button up here. Now if I go to the student view, the student also gets this button and um, you know, maybe it might be a good idea to put it a little bit off so you can see the results. Okay. All right. So now if the student tries to do a, correct their answers, it says, okay, it corrected it. As you see, the correction count went up by two, but their score did not change. Uh, so you can, of course, uh, have the students independently evaluate their boards and so on. So let me build upon this a little even further. So there was a really uh, nice suggestion, a nice, a nice idea from a teacher about allowing students to progress through their assignment based upon a successful scores uh, on each page, right? So let's say it's almost like an escape room type of a feature where you so need to solve a problem, get the password and move on to the next. Right. So let's say we want to build that. I'm going to do. I'm going to build a, a next. A, a go to the next page as a teacher. Let's say I just. I I could add another assignment here, but for now, for all I want to do is just say good job. Okay. And then I go back to page one. I open up the page thumbnails, and then I. Select this page, or I click this page, and I can add a password to it. Now the password can just be a regular password for hiding a page, for example, and so you, you need to provide a password to unlock it. Or you can say that I want the password to be the last page's score in percentage. I want them to score a hundred percent before they can move forward. All right. I'm just going to go back to page one. And it's still, since I haven't validated my answers correctly. All right, there we go. I'm on page one. Let's look at the student view. So the student is here. Now the student is trying to go to page two, but what does it say? This whiteboard dot chat says the score is too low. You need at least hundred percent. Now the student needs to figure out. Okay, let me see. I think I understand what my mistake was. So I'm going to now type in this answer, and I'm going to click to check my answers. I says, okay, finish correction. And now I have hundred percent. Awesome. Let me try and go to the next page. And now I can go to the next page. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very similar to your escape room type of a pattern and you can create um, your assignments so that they can build upon their successes. Awesome. Um, let me go back and yeah. So any questions so far, Paul? And Noor has another one. If I download the student board, will the results show on the board to 
help direct the student to their mistakes um download this so you mean to say a, a pdf copy you mean uh, you know i think that right yes yes so yes yes pdf that's right so uh, the the results can show um, to yeah so you can definitely then talk to the students to help them out with uh, their answers and, and direct them for um, what their mistakes were yeah okay so let's uh, move on to uh, the tiles feature so here's a few additions to that as well so you you can find the tile factory in um, the tools menu again let's click on this now uh, i think in previous webinars we've covered uh, some of the basic tiles like this so teachers can create simple tiles and then of course assign some colors and things like that to them as well uh, in addition now of course you can create um, let me clear some of these out so it becomes easier to read now let's say i want to make cards out of these so you can then select these options so you can say students can move so they can click the cards that they want and you can create create cards sub, just independent cards by themselves so the students can see them as well so we go to page number 1 Right. And then uh, here's uh, another really cool option. So if you would like to uh, make the cards as flashcards, so what uh, what can be done is you provide uh, you input a semicolon between the one face of the card and then the uh, the other face of the card as well. So let's say just do these two cards. And now if you are in the select mode, so let's say if, I, if I'm as a student, if I go here, I can now flip between these cards by just clicking the bar up there, right? So you can have something like a flash card there. Uh, now, let's say that you want, you would like to create matching cards. So it's almost like another type of a game that you'd like to make. So if I use the same options, I'm using a, a for Apple, B for Boy, and I say click uh, matching cards and click that, now I get these pairs of cards and as a student now if i go out here i if i select let's say apple and i say b it doesn't really do anything because they are mismatched cards but now if i say b for uh, and then select boy these cards would disappear so it's it's almost like a matching game that you can you can have for the kids as well uh, another new addition to this has been uh, the ability to add tiles which are just uh, the sign language tiles so if you if you'd like to even make tiles which are of this type um, there we go so maybe i put them behind so let me get rid of these you should answer like the make card the make yep that's right thanks There you go. So now you got A, B, C, E in the A cell dice form. Okay. Uh, let's move on to another feature, which is the form factory. So that this fe feature um, essentially allows you to create uh, a, a list of, uh, it's, it's basically a form with uh, check boxes, radio buttons and labels. So it allows you to, uh, to get an assessment or some sort of an input from uh, your students and also prepare uh, the uh, sort of a, a report based on that. So to make it a little bit quicker, I've already typed in some of the uh, sample that I'd like to use here. So let me explain that in a second. I'm just gonna copy these. So what I have done here is that uh, it is, there's a checkbox which will ask them, will, let's say I'm planning out some sort of a picnic or I'm uh, some sort of an out, outing with the students. So, so it asks them, I will bring my own lunch and it asks them their preference to sit. They would like to sit in the front, middle or the back of the bus, for example. So uh, and now I hit create. Or maybe I should have just cleared this first. So there's an overlap. I'm gonna hit create again. So now I have uh, the options that you provide to a student saying, I will bring my lunch. I would like to sit maybe in the middle, front, back. So let's look at the student view of this. Maybe I should just create this on the page. 
Can you just move this up? Ed, you can just do the clear. It will clear it on the student board. On the student board. On the student board as well. Right, and so the student picks saying, I will bring out lunch. I'd like to sit in the middle. Right, and then as a student, as a teacher now, you can click on your results button. To get a form, which is. You didn't hit submit on the student side. I thought I did. Okay, so let me try it again. So it's Click these two and hit submit. Yeah, I think it, it's a changes color when the submit button is pressed. Oops, right. And I hit results. So now what I have, the teacher can get to see uh, what the students submitted, uh, plus like an aggregated version of their uh, their responses as well. Uh, you can also hide your student name. So let's say you want to anonymize this while you're sharing your screen. That's uh, an option that is available to you. Okay. Any questions, Paul? Yeah. Uh, no. So, let's move on to yeah. So there's a few other uh, tools that have been added. So there's a rec and rec that was uh, added as well. So this asks you a number of lines that you'd like to add, and then you can place these beads around. We can move them. And that's uh, really helpful based on recommendations from teachers again. So that was a really nice uh, addition. All right, so let's... Sorry, one more question, yes. Sid. How many questions can we add in the uh, form factory? Do we have to add one by one? Uh, did you, I haven't scaled, uh, tried how many to scale it, Pawan, have you tested it? Uh, it's just the size of the screen, so... You can create multiple forms if you want to. Uh, you can just keep pasting inside the form factory. You can have multiple of those. There's no limit. It's just the size of the screen and it depends on the font size as well. Yeah, because finally so, it was all top down. And so, yeah. yeah. If you make a really small font, you can fit a lot of them in there and you don't yeah, have to add by one by one. So if you... So the font size out here also controls the font size of the text that is going into the form. Okay, uh, so let's look at another feature, which is uh, uh, our web embedding feature. So you may have already seen that within the tool section, you have uh, the ability to embed a website, but there's uh, you can now use that website embedding tool to also embed Google Sheets, for example. So I have a Google Sheet out here, which I just prepared for demonstration. So it's a grade five science. It just shows them the scientific method, right? And uh, now I want to include that in my board. Uh, here's how you go about doing it. So you click on, so while you have your bow, your sheet, you click on share. Now, one thing that's not very obvious here is that you can actually click on this particular panel and it change, gives you a, uh, the option to changing the restrictions on this, on this board. So I, I would like anyone on this, uh, you, so the, in, the, in, the, in the default mode, what you will see is something like this. You will see that it's restricted and only people with this uh, link can open it. But what you'd like, if you would like to include it in a whiteboard, you can click on anyone with this link and view. Make sure it's a viewer so nobody can change it. And you copy this link and hit done. Now I go back to my whiteboard. Click on tools, website. So I drop it up here. You can make this a little bit bigger. Include that URL here. And there you go. So now let's see from the student point of view, the student is also able to see the same slide deck and the student can navigate around and also view that deck as well. So this is another, another really useful way to use the, uh, the website embedding feature. Okay. Uh, another one of the features that uh, we added, which I talked about a little earlier is the ability to create puzzles. So let's lay, take a look at that. So. Uh, now you can use this uh, th th this feature of, on any image that you put into whiteboard.chat. Let's say I, I go and pick a, a, a Mars 2020 mission picture. So I just search for Mars 2020 images and I am just going to take a snippet of this. I'm going to use, copy this image and I want to make a puzzle out of that. So I'm going to paste it out here in my whiteboard. 
just to make sure that it fits uh, very uh, cleanly and that we have enough room to move the puzzle pieces around. I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Move it out to here to the left. Now, all I need to do is, so this could be any image and you just go into select mode. And if you scroll down here, now you can see there's, an, there's a new option here for make jigsaw. So once you select that, it asks you the number of pieces that you'd like to make uh, out of these uh, for the whole picture. So you can say nine, let's say I said, and now here you have your jigsaw puzzle uh, pieces there. Now you can, of course, um, shuffle them around and um, then make it a little bit interesting. And then, of course, you can uh, share it with your students. So let me let me share this link with you, uh, with all, all of you participants, and you can have a, uh, some fun solving the puzzle. Now, here's one quick pro tip as well. So you, you are already very familiar with the option of clicking the invite button here. But now there's a quick pro tip here. The classroom code is now shown displayed right up here. So if anybody see joins your meeting a little bit late, and uh, you don't want and they don't have the link they can quickly go and read this classroom code while you're screen sharing and then join it alternately you can also click on this link button here to get the invite uh, url copy to your clipboard and now i can paste it out here and you're welcome to join the board and uh, play with it uh, as students uh, we can now i will also extend this further and show you how uh, we can make groups to solve the call uh, the the jigsaw puzzle but uh, let me take a, a moment to maybe uh, take some questions uh, i think you're on mute Pam. sorry so one question on the um embedding of the sheet uh, or the Google slide, can you change the end of the URL to say preview? Preview. Um, so if you do preview, it does full screen uh, slideshow. So yeah, it, uh, you can do that. Okay, yeah, so we can try that as well if you'd like me to. Yeah, just open it yeah, again and just sure. change it to preview. It looks nicer. Yeah, so I can make sure I copy the link. We take out the edit up to the edit and change that to preview. No, take out the edit. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you should be able to see this as well if you just go to the third page. Awesome. One more question, yes. can, can students clone the jigsaw pieces or is it disabled automatically? Uh, so right now, let, let me show you as a teacher, if I click on the, uh, the jigsaw pieces, they, they're marked as students, they can move them, but they cannot clone them at this time. So they're already in the mode that you'd like uh, them to be. But of course, if you, for some reason, if you'd like to change them, you can change these settings after creating the puzzle pieces as well. Uh, any other questions for him? No, no, that's it. Awesome. All right, so let's uh, then take a look at how we can create uh, groups as well. So this is a common uh, feature that we'd like to use. So uh, if you could, if you go to the avatar menu up here, you have the option of creating groups. Now you can create pre-create groups by just naming your groups this way and then pre-create them. So when, when you pre-create the groups, you um, uh, and as your students join in, they will get asked along with their name. They you would be uh, they would be asked the group name that you, they need to join, and um, then they would automatically be added to that group. Uh, versus now, if you have uh, students already in your groups uh, or already joined into your board, then you can you can effectively or, or select which ones you want them, which you which ones you want to group. So let's say for example, if I say my student. Uh, I, I can pick these students, have them in group one. I can create another group. 
and and the and so as you can see the these icons change when the students are already part of the group and so you know which ones are already assigned and which ones i have not been assigned if i create these groups now uh, all of you who are on those boards you will all automatically be grouped and you can uh, work on the puzzle together okay uh, another thing that uh, the announcement that uh, was added recently to the group boards is that where you can auto create groups so let's say that you you want um, to add the number of students so if you want to divide your groups into groups of uh, or divide your, your classroom into groups of five you can just say i want five it says number of students in a group so you can just say fives and auto create groups so as the students join in they will automatically be dropped in to groups and then it will try to make them uh, in groups of five okay any questions from I can't move the puzzle pieces in the group. Somebody is saying I, nothing seems to be working. Right. Right. Uh, you need to change your tool to the move and resize tool. Yeah. So, so if you go, I can change the. So if you go to the as a teacher, if I go to the group gear icon, I can select my tool to be move and resize. And now your default uh, mode is move and resize, and then you should be able to move. Uh, you can, you may also want to try and hit refresh out here uh, on the student board, and that will make sure that you uh, have the right uh, tool as well. So let me try that here. I'm a part of the group as well as as a as a student here. So now I'm able to move these. Yeah. Cool. Right, so we went through the puzzle, the profit, and uh, yeah. Let me just quickly also go over. Oops, the, So let's say that when you copied an image, um, there's there's some part of the image that you do, do, do not want to keep as part of your puzzle. You also have the ability to crop the image if you'd like. So for example, you can select it and then you can select the crop option. Is that the part? Uh, is that, oh, sorry. I'm forgetting where we put the yes, yeah, there we have the select and crop function. Sorry, and now you can pick um, the, the 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 board that. So let's say that you you want to have a larger image of just the perseverance lander there. You can select this and crop this part. So that way, you know, if you pick any other any image from uh, a website and embed it, you you have the ability to even fix it here and uh, then make a puzzle piece out of that. Uh, I think we've covered most of the other features. I think there's oh, there's there's also the feature on drop zone. Maybe I should talk about that. So let me move on to page number four, maybe. So uh, a drop zone is uh, is basically uh, all just like an auto correct, but it's for manipulatives. So auto correct is a text box that helps you add text or um, uh, numbers, right? Or digits, alphanumeric characters. But let's say we uh, want to add um, a drop zone, which which could it could be used to, uh, for example, uh, count the number of coins, right? So let's say I create this drop zone and I add some manipulatives. So let's say I say, uh, I'm gonna add 100 block. One block, one block. I'm just going to resize them so that they fit in a little bit more easily. All right. And uh, now I want them to uh, be able to create, um, or rather, add the manipulatives so that they sum up to say 112. So let's say I say. I go and add text entry here. Move this around a little bit. Okay. And now I would like to add, so I'm going to mark these as student skin clone.
And so this is already the drop zone. So what I'm going to do is that I need to drop these objects in as the ones that I'd like, uh, the, would, which, which would count as the correct answer. So I'm going to take the um, move and resize. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to take the infinite cloner. So I can take this at 100, 10, I got two of these. Right, so and then I select add answers and points. So I've already added the answer in some sense, but I want to give them some specific points for this. And that's it. So once you've added the answers and points, now this is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and as a student, I can go on to page number five. And so now my drop zone effectively acts as I'm in a group board. So I need no, to get page my, four. Sorry, page four. That's right. Okay. And I'd also like to go to my own board. I don't just want to add me together the group, for example. Page four again. There we go. And now I can solve this addition problem right here. And I can also do the idea autocorrect same sort of autocorrect functionality here. Okay. So as a teacher now, if I go and say autocorrect all the boards. Wait. Second part to cover it correct. I think there are quite a few boards that we need to go through. It says finished auto correction. You can go to the student, and there you go. So that um, so you can use it for exercises where uh, you 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 want students to count coins and add them up to a particular number and things of that that, that type. Uh, any questions, Paul? Are you on mute again? <laughs> This is crazy. Uh, people cannot go to page number four because you have it locked set. Can you change it to a password? Because you were demonstrating on the same <laughs> thing. The... I see. Okay. So just right click page two and say add password and make it like a password of one, two, three. Yeah, I just made it one, two, three. So, so you can, maybe I could have even deleted that, but that's not. Okay. Oh, still effective score. Are you able to now change to page four? Yeah, now you can, if you go, to, if you want to go, you can just set the password as one, two, three. You have to refresh your board, so. Okay, any other questions, Paul? No. Oh, no one has what? Yes. Uh, so it says there are two questions. Um, does whiteboard support adding applets, interactive or animated graphs, for example? Uh, so if you uh, add them as a embedded website, uh, uh, that's one possibility. Uh, some of the uh, applications support embedding. So maybe I can try and go to page five and show that. I think there was a website called um, Apps for Learning. Math Learning Center. So, for example, it's the dot org, and so they have some apps here. So, for example, there's a number line. There's a open web app if you try that. And I believe th this website allows us to embed because it also depends upon whether the, that website that you want to embed allows embedding. And uh, if it does, then that will work just fine. But if it, not, it does not, then what you might see is it just basically renders a whiteboard.chat splash page here again. But this, this is just fine now because we, students can use this number line. Does that, I hope that answers your question. Then. Okay, one more question. Uh, what if I auto correct all boards and not all students were done? Uh, you can uh, auto correct it again. So that certainly is is perfectly fine. And then uh, you can then download the, the sheet again and that will have the updated grades. 
and then does auto correct great handwritten answers or only text uh, not yet <laughs> and written answers would need a, a fair amount of uh, uh, for us to actually detect what the handwriting answer was so yeah so far it's only uh, typed in text that uh, the students type in that's it okay uh, so i think uh, uh, is there any other feature that pawn i may have missed and i should uh, talk about i think i've covered everything at here let me just go over it again Uh, there's some there's also this feature to uh, write software uh, i think we're trying to write uh, uh, prepare some documentation on it so yeah there's uh, so you can essentially it gives you uh, the ability to i don't have some sample code with me immediately right now but uh, maybe i can look up give me a second so if we add a, a write software box here so you can write simple programs that will help your students learn uh, in general what sort of procedural language uh, is and uh, how you can have fun by by making the computer do things like add robots move them around so here's a sample program that i have oops uh, change a font to tiny yeah. before you put the that's right which of arrange before Okay, let me get rid of this and add it. Okay. Add a tool. Okay, software. Okay, I'm just gonna have a duplicate box there, but that's okay for now. I'm going to have this program here, and I'm going to paste, close, and now if I run it, it uh, so this adds a robot, gives them positions, and then it starts to move them around. So uh, there's uh, we we're working on some detailed documentation on this, so you can actually use it in your classroom as well. And uh, but uh, yeah, if you're interested in, in just looking up our sample code, just write us a, an email at feedback at whiteboard dot chat, and we can send you some snippets as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, the few other additions that we made recently, uh, you may have seen them on our Facebook page as well. In the widget section, we now have. Um, uh, a student name spinner so before i add that maybe i can change my page and so what this does is it automatically creates a spinner with the student names uh, initialized in there and as the students uh, if you have um, um, new students that come in late that's fine they will the, the spinner will update itself automatically so that the spinner uh, includes their names a uh, few things to keep in mind is that uh the uh, if you remove students so one of you as you may know teachers have the ability to remove students from the open class board panel here right using these delete buttons so if you remove them those will not get updated in your spinner immediately but if you um uh, uh, uh delete the spinner and add a new one that will again have the updated list of uh, students if you'd like uh the uh, again you have the same controls of you know student can spin and everything as as well okay. uh, there's a question there's a question about biology widgets is there a plan to add biology widgets you know we um, you know we we would love to uh, i think we just need the right sort of information from the teachers and uh, we would love to do meetings to figure out more information and we can certainly work on that Yeah, basically we like challenges. <laughs> so if you come up with new things for us to add, we yeah. welcome that. But we have at least I have forgotten all of my biology. So <laughs> so you have to tell us what to do, and we can do it. Yeah. A few other uh, quick things. Uh, there's one question in the previous webinar about this button. Let it snow. So this is just for fun, uh, just to increase increase engagement. Nothing more than that. but if you'd like any if you have suggestions about such things that help you increase engagement in your classroom do let us know you know we would love to add those kind of things as well it doesn't necessarily have to be all instructional there's another one said can we add 
two spinners for one class, sometimes too many student names in one class, it becomes crowded. I see. Um, so here's uh, the couple of things com comments about that. So you can add two spinners, both will both student spinners will be updated to include uh, all the student names. Uh, we don't have the ability to partition the students automatically. But uh, we can we can certainly think about that. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, what I'd like to also point out is that you have the option of resizing this spinner as well. So if you if if you've got too many students now joined in, you can certainly make the spinner bigger, and that makes it a lot more readable and usable. If you, that helps out. Any other questions, Brian? Mm, no. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Pawan, any other thing that you'd like me to uh, talk about? No, I think we think covered we most of the things that we wanted to. Well, maybe like the speech to text and. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. I can try that. Immersive try reader that. editing, maybe those two things. Yes, sure. So let's say we have, uh, I add a text box. Let me see if I can do that. Some. So let's say you add some text in here. So we have the ability now to have the immersive reader, which is an accessibility feature. So you select it, select whichever text you'd like, and you say, read an immersive reader. So this brings up your uh, Microsoft immersive reader. And then um, of course, uh, right now I'm muted, but let me see. Right, so I hope you were able to hear that. So that immersive reader can not only be used for just text like this, but you can also uh, upload a PDF. So let's say if I use the upload from computer, actually I should talk about the Google Drive as well. Let me do that in a second. So let's say I do a webinar and let's say I, uh, let me try this one. And you, you you have the ability to also select a PDF like this. And let me see if I can add the, the so so it can read uh, PDFs as well. Now sometimes uh, teachers do have uh, run into an issue where it may be a scanned PDF, so it's not uh, the actual text that you see, but just an image. And if you are if you run into that situation, you can also select the PDF here, and you can say edit immersive immersive reader. And you can change the text that is, that is going to be read out. So you, know, you can just say, oops. let's say I want to remove all that. And I just want to keep this. And I can say save. So now, if the students go and say read an immersive reader, they will see your modified text only. Right. So that helps you clean up things a little bit. So in case you have PDFs which were not set up correctly. Now, uh, another option you have, another accessibility feature that we have added recently is the ability to do speech to text, right? So if I, if I want to say, can you type this in for me? Right? So you have the option to talk about, uh, to speak and actually take a, make a dictation out of it. Uh, this also has the ability to, to do some, to do translation. So if you, let's say I, I want, uh, I want this to be translated into German. I'm going to speak in English. I'm going to translate in German. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't have it clicked. I want to read the microphone there. Okay, so I got to select this and let's say, good morning. How are you doing today? So there you go. So now it's translated into good morning. How it gets to. So we have the translation feature as well. Uh, of course, these options are both available to students and teachers. So um, is there anything else from that should be talked about? No, I think we covered most okay. of the things. So let me go ahead and stop the recording for the webinar. And then we can- uh, Oh, Sid, uh, they want to see about the window shade, the shade thing. thing. Okay. Um, let me, yeah. 
So let's say, so th this feature is, uh, it's under the tools, I remember. Student signal. Uh, it's in the student signal. Okay, so this feature was re uh, requested by a teacher uh, for uh, temporarily hiding the uh, a particular section of your board, if you like. So if you want to only reveal this material to your students at a later time, um, I'm going to this one. Okay, so I'm on page eight here. Let me go to the student board. I'm going to move to page eight. There you go. So the students are unable to see this unless the teacher specifically goes and uh, moves the shade around. So now the, the students are able to see exactly uh, things when the uh, teacher wants to reveal those. Uh, to them. So this, the teacher can uh, create a board and uh, have them focused on specific sections and only reveal them as they, they go further along in the instruction. Okay, so let me stop the recording for now and we can